Well, I want to say a happy Thanksgiving. I don't know what you're doing and how full you are and what you've eaten, but if you've had food yet, uh, praise the Lord. Happy Thanksgiving. And what are you thankful for? A lot of us arrange our Thanksgiving around food. That's a strange thought. Is your Thanksgiving just arranged around food? The Bible talks about, and food is what? Like uh, we're feeding our flesh. Now, I like the food and I can handle the food and I hope you handled your food. Uh, sometimes turkey, how you, if you have turkey for Thanksgiving, turkey puts you to sleep. So when we think of Thanksgiving, we arrange it around our food. I think it's great to have a good time. So I'm going to give you a positive note. The Bible in the book of Acts says uh, the early uh, believers in Jesus, it said they continued in the apostles' teaching, they fellowshiped, which means they hung out or got together, and this is the other one, they uh, ate together. So it's not unbiblical to arrange things around food. Arranging your Thanksgiving around uh, the flesh, though, is not just food. You can arrange, the early disciples did, arranged fellowship and arranged godly experiences around food. So what's the difference between just doing something in the flesh and doing something that's blessed in the Lord? Hanging out with your friends can be very carnal or fleshly. You ever have people that you're hanging out with? Well, how do you have a good time with the Lord with food? Well, I think the point is, is that Thanksgiving can be a time of just the flesh, or you can have food, but have it in a spiritual nature. You say, how on earth, what on earth are you talking about? Well, Thanksgiving is a part of us. The Bible talks about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and it says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you. It's not a clever statement. And then the next verses do not quench the spirit. When you are thankful, and I really mean God continually can provide things in your human nature, might not see it, but there's things at points in time where the Holy Spirit is actually wanting you to keep yourself thankful. It's a great way to proceed in life to always know I need to always be producing thankfulness in myself, but not in my own strength. So this is the key, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, because this is exactly what this verse says, produces in you the ability to control your heart. If you want to get to a place where even if something, if you're dealing with a shock or you're dealing with something that's very hard, doesn't mean that it's unspiritual, just life can be hard sometimes. You have a shock experience even. Controlling your heart in every moment is not an easy thing to do. There's a Bible verse in the New Testament, and in a time of testing, it's harder to do. Now, we may say, God, thank you for the food. Uh, amen. And that's a good little prayer to have, thanking God, praising God. But this Thanksgiving, did you know the outpouring of the, what the Holy Spirit and who he is and what he's been put into your heart, whatever you've gone through, you can control your heart and say, in this moment, I'm going to, even in a shock, even in a time of trouble, even when you feel like time has run out on something, I need to thank the Lord. There's never a time when you've run out on the ability to thank him. Now, I don't mean to blast anyone, be mean to anybody. They said that the disciples got together and had food so thanking you for the food, Lord, is not just the only way we can thank God when we're having Thanksgiving. Thankfulness is something the Holy Spirit, it says, if you aren't in all things giving thanks, it says you can quench the Spirit. Notice that little statement put together. Where do you go with Thanksgiving? I don't want to go where I quench the Spirit. I want to be grateful in my heart. I want to say the not the right thing, but being thankful is saying the right thing. My mouth needs to not only be full of praise, but in everything, give thanks, because this is the will of God for your life. It sounds like a strange thing. We underestimate being thankful and how it affects our nature. What I'm going to just say to you is, I uh, 
I had a personal experience. I've used this a couple times in the church. It's something that I've felt free to share. Some experiences aren't so subtle. This one was more subtle. I got, uh, I was turning in a left turn lane on a highway, not a big highway, but like a back road highway. And someone, uh, they, there was a little turn spot and they followed me in, even though my light was on, instead of going straight ahead. And they didn't realize they hit me from behind. And I was probably in shock when it happened. Now, I phoned my wife when I was on the side, got out of the car on the side of the road. The car wasn't going anywhere. And I said, I'm not in shock. Uh, I said, I got hit, but I am bleeding. And she arrived and she uh, lived, we were very close. I was close to home. So she was there in about three minutes. She looked at me and she said, you are in shock. And she said, and the car's toast, so you can't drive it home. And the police were there. And then she said this, and she said, and the reason you're bleeding is because you bit your lip. Now, in that moment, I could have got really, as a matter of fact, I was getting upset. I could almost feel my heart drifting and getting upset. Elizabeth got uh, all the groceries out of the back of the trunk with the firemen, drove the groceries home. And so I'm standing there and I actually remember dealing with the police officer and my heart was going sideways. My car's trashed. And I remember stopping myself and getting control of my heart and saying, I'm going to thank the Lord. I've walked away from this. Uh, I'm lucky I'm, walk I'm walking away from this okay. I mean, I felt jarred. I was sore, but there was nothing wrong. And the joke is, here I am, and why am I bleeding? Because I bit my lip. Now, in that moment, I, th I had to take the time, and I actually thanked the Lord, and it affected my mood. I became... I was becoming a little sour. I could have got grumpy or grouchy. And so it produced in me the experience, a not so subtle, very reflective moment where instantly I felt totally different. I got hammered in the car, but I felt different when I thanked the Lord. And I really did. I, I didn't just lip service it. I meant it. And it was true. I think he kept his hand on me. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my midst, there I am and with them in the, also. But I would say this, if you're even alone and God is in your heart, you know, guiding you and something happens, take the moment to praise the Lord or thank him. Your mood will be not so subtly changed. I entered into a difference in my own heart by thanking God for who I am. Uh, or who he is in me. And it's odd, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit gives you the ability as a Christian, if you're filled with the Spirit, I think I'm not saying anything that isn't right here. Be thankful always in every situation. Now, in a bad one, now I'm not thank you for the situation that's bad, but thank you that I walked away from this. It did something distinctly better than anything I could have done. My heart was uh, joyful and it produced a difference in the way I talked. I right away thanked the OPP officer and it meant a lot to him. I said, you were very kind to me. You were protecting me. You knew I was in shock. And I really made a very conscious decision to not just barrel over and say, I'm going to get through this by my own strength. I said, Lord, I need you to help me with my heart right now. I don't know where you're going in life. And if you get, but if you get stopped, if you get hit, if you get on sideline on the side of the road, grab a hold of your heart and thank the Lord. It's an interesting thing. When Jesus fed the 5,000, and it was probably more than 5,000, because usually they only counted the men in those days. Might have been 20,000, including women and children. Jesus, it says, he broke bread, took what they had, broke bread, and all he did is, it says, when he had given thanks, it produced a miracle. And I would say this, the feeding of the 5,000, he didn't really pray over it. He just thanked God for it. It's not, a, it's not an unsubtle thing when you read it in the Bible. We might miss it because in English it wouldn't make as much sense, but thanksgiving is a sense not just of praying for the meal, 
but of actually being grateful in your heart or thank you for what you've done. He took it, he broke the bread and the fish and they had fed thousands of people. They were totally full. And I don't wanna just say, you know, be enamored with the problem. I wanna say, thank God in every situation, you know, in a respectful way. I mean, I'm not saying be a goof about it or be strange about it or be weird about it, but Lord, I walked away from this, thank you. What are the things that I can instantly thank God for? And it needs to be said that thankfulness, when Jesus broke the bread and gave thanks, he did it in light of a daunting task. How on earth? Nobody's believing him. He's going to be able to feed all these people. So thanksgiving is able to unlock a miracle for you. And I'm going to say it. It was a miracle for me in my heart to change my mood in the moment. It's easy to have a good mood when there's something to have a good mood about. But if you can't be moved in your heart, if you say, I'm sidelined in life, find things to thank God for. The early Christians, they did three things, continued in the apostle, apostles' teaching, fellowship, and they broke bread together. They ate together, not just communion. They had meals together. This Thanksgiving, don't just be, Lord, I thank you in the flesh and I love the food. You can thank God for the food and go a different way in your heart. You can really be thankful to Lord. Thank you for the people that are stand, sitting around, standing around me right now. Thank you for what you've grown in my life this year. Thank you for every option that you've given to me this year. Thank you, Lord. Don't take offense at people easily. Don't look for the bad in, in the, put the good in the back seat. You can often put the good in the back seat of your car. I think Thanksgiving is when you take the good and bring it in the front seat. If you're driving down the road, you throw your jacket in the back. There's lots of stuff that we can be mindful of that we can just throw in the back seat. When you're thankful, you are bringing it into the front seat of the car. Engage in something today or whenever you're watching this where it doesn't just throw all the blessings in the back seat. I got it. I got it with me. I have this, bring it into the front. Bring forward something that's in the back seat in the car to the front and say, God, I thank you for this thing. It's a motive. It's a, it's a, ref, it's a reflection that it's not something that gets just left in the back. Thanksgiving is when you're bringing that thing. Again, I keep saying this because this I felt from the Lord, bring it in the front seat. What is the thing you need to bring in the front seat of your car to thank God for? Go over and say, God, it's not just something I'm going to throw back there. It's something I value. The thing about Thanksgiving is if you're bringing it into the front seat, whatever it is you're thankful for from the back seat to the front, do you value what God has given to you? The outpouring of the Holy Spirit can push you through when you thank God and change your mood. It can change your heart. It's not, moods often come out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's reflected in what we say and how we say it. God, the Bible says, and I believe this, God's got my back. Take what's out of the back seat, bring it in the front because you value that thing. Do you value what God's given you? I value everything, God, that you've given me and be aware of it and thank him. The only other thing I would say is when you do, it can change your heart. If you ever feel that you're losing control of your heart, thank God. Thank God for the people around you or the things that you can think of, be grateful and thankful for. It can produce a miracle. For me, it changed my heart. It changed my experience. Yes, I had a trash car, but I got another car. God knows the moment you're in. And the moment you're in something be aware of your heart. Give God those times and thank him. Bring something forward, especially if it's a gray day. It's a sunny day. It's easy to be happy on a sunny, warm day. But I'll tell you, where I live, where we live, the gray day is going to come. It's called January, December, cloudy skies, lots of rain. I don't want to see you, Lord, 
just uh, kind of being Lord of the good times. I want to give you all times and go into it. God, I thank you for this. Even in what seems impossible, praise the Lord. Jesus showed that God can work a miracle when you give thanks. Miracles in the Bible often happen when you thank God. Jesus healed a leper and he healed a whole bunch of them. He healed this whole group of lepers. Only one of them comes back. And Jesus said, because you came back and gave thanks, salvation has come to you. Thankfulness produces things that you do not want to underestimate what God will do for you when you're thankful. Jesus said, nine guys or whatever the number was, get healed when I heal them. None of them come back. Thanksgiving provides for you, in the case of the leper, salvation. The relationship that you have with God is one you want to be grateful for. The things that you value, make sure we thank him for. The people, the, the purposes that God has for you, thanksgiving can do something enormous in your heart. When you thank him, it can free your heart. I mean, this leper literally was given thanksgiving because he grew close to the Lord. If the people in the New Testament spend a lot of time eating together, thank the Lord. Eating together is good. And be thankful for what God has done in you, not just in the flesh, but in the Holy Ghost. Let your heart rejoice. Uh, don't burn the toast this weekend. God, I pray the goose would taste good or whatever it is we're having. Go there with God. God will fill you and your heart with good things when we honor him with our voice. Don't let your voice be silent this Thanksgiving. Speak up. Say something to, that you're grateful for and let it work for you. Let God work for you. May the Holy Spirit punch through in your heart in every moment. Take the time to honor him and reflect what's in the back. Bring it up. God, in the things in the back seat, I value you. God has something in store for you when you do it. In Jesus' name. Amen.